So here I am at school and thinking I need to get off this laptop and you guys probably need to get off the laptops. So I'm going to set you a fitness challenge. Can you climb the Eiffel Tower at home? That's the staircase beside Miss Robinson's maths room. Now I'm going to measure the height of the stairs. Okay, so hopefully you saw that the ruler is 16.8 centimeters, so that's divided by 100, that's 0 0.168, and now I need to find out how tall the Eiffel Tower is. So I'm going to check how tall uh, how tall the Eiffel Tower is. It's 324 meters to the tip. Okay, so let's climb to the tip, so 324 divided by the height of one of our steps, 3.168, make sure they're in the same unit, they're both in meters, so I get, ooh, that's a lot of steps, uh, 1,920, let's say, nine steps, and then divide it by, so I counted the steps, there's 20 in my flight of stairs, so many flight of stairs do I have to do, I divide by 20, it means I have 96.42. Two. So I'm going to round that up so I'm not cheating. I'm going to try and do 97 flights of stairs. Okay, so it's time for me to do this challenge. I'm going to climb the Eiffel Tower, I'm going to get changed, and then I'm going to run up and downstairs for a while. Okay, so it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I got my water, and I'm going to try and do the challenge. Okay, so I've done 50. I'm counting using these stones. Every stone is worth five. So time, so you can see that it was just 18 minutes 30 or so. And now I'm just over halfway. So I gotta keep going. All right. Just 10 left. This is current time and calories. Ooh, this is pretty tough. Last one. There is done. That's the time. So I'm back at the stairs outside Mr. Robinson's room um, for where I did my Eiffel challenge, Tower Challenge yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna now set you some maths questions, uh, challenge questions, see so can anyone answer them. I brought out rulers and protractors. I'm gonna take some measurements and I'm gonna set some questions. Okay, so it's time for some of the maths for this Eiffel Tower uh, at home challenge. 
what is the angle of elevation of each step? So if you're near 7 and 8, you may need to research that. Um, it's from trigonometry, but it's basically just reading the protractor. Part B then, what is the length of one shoe? So I've used shoes to measure some of this uh, challenge. So you need to know the length of one shoe. You can criticize my accuracy later on. Question two, estimate the distance covered in the stair climb challenge. Seems quite easy, but I'm talking about my literal distance as if I was running up a mountain. No, we're not looking at the vertical distance. That should be 324, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, we're not looking at the horizontal distance either. We are looking at this diagonal distance or the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, looking at that distance. Now there's a lot of inaccuracies here um, that you may need to come into. It's not as simple as that. For instance, there's actually two staircases separated by that little patch in the middle which I measured with my shoe. Also the bit at the start I measured with my shoe. There's no right answer here, but there are going to be some close estimations used in trigonometry. With right angles, triangles such as these, you're going to have to use some trigonometry to work out what my distance covered in the entire challenge was. Okay, so remember I did 100 of those flights of stairs, 20 steps in each. Question three, a plan to climb 324 meters vertically. Uh, how far do you think I climbed? So I planned, maybe I didn't. Uh, I did 100 flights of stairs, not the 97 I was planning on doing. So how far do you think that was vertically? So I'm looking for this, this up. You may need to use trigonometry again, or you could use your estimation skills, or you can just use those measurement skills. And you may notice that each step wasn't the same. So you may have to think about that. Calculate some sort of percentage error. So once you've figured out how far you think I climbed, I wanted to climb 324 meters, so maybe you can find out a percentage error. You may need to look up the percentage error formula for that. And you may need to find out what the error was. Question four. What was my average speed or velocity? So my speed, well you can break it up in a number of ways. You can talk about horizontal speed, vertical speed, or you just do overall speed diagonally. So that is up to you how you want to interpret that question. Uh, simple speed, of course, is distance divided by time. So you have my time so we're there. Make sure you convert it to the right units. Uh, perhaps you want to do kilometers per hour, meters per second. Up to you. Um, it might be interesting to have a number of different uh, representations of that speed. Question five, criticize my accuracy. Okay, so there's lots of issues with this stair climb challenge. You need to find out as many as you can. Criticize me and my methods as much as you want, but back them up with some facts, mathematical facts if you can. Maybe some research, maybe some calculations. You may need to draw a diagram for some of these when you're handing in your, your 
of answers, uh, especially those right angle triangles in questions two and three. Okay, good luck with it. So you've got your five questions for uh, the Eiffel Tower problem. There's another five at another stage, but we start off with these five. Um, think about how you present your work when you present this. Um, in maths, it's important that we logically lay out our work. If you have a point to make, back it up with calculations, diagrams, research, tables, graphs, something like that, and then discuss afterwards. For instance, there's no point in saying that something is very, very accurate or very inaccurate. They are not very precise mathematical terms. You can back things up with percentage errors and then make a statement after that. So that might be one way of going for those particular questions that ask you to discuss. For those older students, years 10, 11, 12, you guys will be doing IAs at some stage for a diploma program. And when you get to the end of year 12 and start of year 13, uh, this is very similar to the kind of discussions you may need to have regarding limitations and accuracy issues of your models that you create. So you may create some sort of functional model and you may have to delve into the accuracy issues. Perhaps more simplistic, my stair climb, but definitely some of the language you can use and some of the methods you use, you can apply here. So you can try and figure out where you can look at those uh, limitations of my work and of your um, your work due to my lack of information I gave you. If you have any questions, more welcome to email me on any of this. Let's see who creates some interesting answers. Delve into it as much as you can, especially maybe if you're in, in the younger years and you haven't done trigonometry yet, maybe you can research trigonometry. There's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do some of it or all of it. Um, for instance, uh, trigonometric ratios, um, sine, cos, and tan, all those things you see on the calculator, you're going to get to them at some stage, so why not learn them a year early? Uh, you guys in year 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, you should be well familiar with trigonometric ratios at this stage and how to apply them in this particular problem. Um, if you're not, maybe you can ask your math teacher over the next couple of weeks how to do it. Okay. So good luck with this challenge and hopefully we see some interesting and detailed answers to this problem.